Good morning everyone and happy Tuesday. I'm back this week because today is actually Chihuahua Appreciation Day. So I thought I'd generalize to all small breeds because I find I don't talk about them that much. I talk about medium to large size dogs most of the time and then horses and cats are tied for a second and other pets but small breed dogs I haven't talked about in a while. So I thought I'd give them their own video because I have a couple of friends and relatives that do have smaller dogs, chihuahuas especially, but I don't get to spend a lot of time with them. I usually end up working with bigger dogs, so it's nice to shine a little light on why people have them, the benefits of smaller breeds, and all the things like that. So, <clears throat> the top of the list is that they are easily transported, so they're allowed more places. There's a lot of towns and cities that say you can bring your pet in if you can carry them to a store or the, on the subway or something like that. And on planes, they don't have to go in the cargo storage. They can come in the actual cabin with you as long as they're in the carrying thing. But people like having their pets with them. A lot of them carry them around anyway and use them more as an accessory than a pet. Not my favorite use of dogs, but people who like small dogs tend to have um, outfits for them and things like that. I haven't met very many chihuahuas that don't, but it is always refreshing to see. They're also cheaper to own than bigger dogs. And this may seem common sense because they're smaller, therefore they eat less food. Which makes sense, they also have to take less medication because the doses are a lot smaller. So if you buy the same amount of medication as a larger dog, it's going to last a lot longer. And your surgery is usually going to be cheaper, especially if they have to be um, put under. Because when I went to get Kaya spayed, she um, was just over the bracket. I think it was like up to 30 pounds and then 30 to 50 she was 31 pounds so it cost me an extra 30 dollars or something to get the drug to put her under they're easier to walk and i say this because i have been a dog walker and most of the dogs that i've been asked to walk are um spaniel or bigger usually but the bigger dogs can drag you down the street the little ones, not as much, but they can be a lot noisier. Some people find um, they're easier to walk too because they don't usually walk as long as bigger dogs. Bigger dogs can just keep going and going unless they're double coated or something like that. Sometimes that slows them down, but in terms of taking them for a walk, you do have to be more wary because people are more likely to step on them. Or, or, you know, back into them or something like that because they can't see them. So that is a kind of heightened walk experience where you have to make sure that nothing is going to hurt them. But public perception of them is that they are safer than bigger dogs. So I know a lot of smaller dogs that aren't friendly and I know a lot of small dogs that are friendly. But people have this perception that Big dogs are more dangerous than the little dogs. And in terms of bite strength, this is true, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to bite you. The dog that bit me was a German Shepherd. So definitely a bigger dog, but in terms of public perception, I've been asked before if Kai was a Husky because they just assume she's big and fluffy, so she must be a Husky. But people who have bigger dogs often have to put a muzzle on them in certain areas because people are afraid that the dog is going to bite somebody just because they're a bigger dog. It doesn't matter if it's a St. Bernard or Husky or a, you know, Boxer mix. People are more likely to assume that your dog is going to hurt someone if they're bigger. So the smaller dogs I find tend to be more, we'll call it um, small dog syndrome in the animal field, most people call it that because the little ones tend to overcompensate. So, <laughs> that's kind of crying. If um, 
somebody came to the door, that's why. If somebody sees a little dog, they get really excited, but sometimes the little dogs get really defensive, either of their owner, they're super protective of their owner, they're super protective of their house. So if anyone comes in, they try and nip them or um, meet them on the street and they're trying to protect their pack or their owner. So sometimes the little ones can be vicious, but I find it totally depends on how they were raised. It has nothing to do with their breed. Because I do know people who have pit bulls that are absolutely amazing. They're breed ambassadors, they're therapy dogs, and it's um, really beautiful to see. Because we shouldn't judge them by how they look on the outside, but their personality on the inside. And people raising them who probably either shouldn't have a dog at all, or have no experience raising that kind of dog, shouldn't should hold more responsibility for the personality of the dog that they're raising. So if it's a quote unquote harder, harder breed to train, meaning a bully breed or something like that, and you've never owned a dog before, probably not the best choice. Not because they're too hard for you, but because you don't have the experience to handle it properly, and handle the public perception of that dog properly, which is a detriment to both your dog's experience and the public's experience, which could make their perception of bullies even worse. So something to think about. In terms of things that people have complained about, in terms of smaller breeds, and I know it's Chihuahua Appreciation Day, and I do love all breeds, all breeds are beautiful. Um, but smaller breeds tend to be louder, and I don't know if you've noticed this, but even in town here, when I walk around the neighborhoods and you see the dogs barking in the window, it's usually the little ones, like the Yorkie or the um, Chihuahua sometimes. I find not as much, but usually the little mix, the white, the white fluffy ones, the um, Maltese, Pekingese, any like that, they tend to bark a lot at the windows. Um, they are more fragile, so I know I said that they're cheaper to own, but they're more prone to injury because they are so small. So for example, if they jump off a couch and land funny, they can hurt themselves, break legs, things like that, because their bones are so tiny. And especially, um, easily to notice when you do acupressure, because you go from, you know, working on a Bernese Mountain Dog or a Golden Retriever, and you know, their, their leg bones are like this, right? Bigger. And then you go to work on the Chihuahua and the acupressure points are so close together that you know, you move your finger half a centimeter and you're on a different point. So it's, they're very delicate and you have to be very careful, especially if you're in a multi-pet household that the other dog doesn't, you know, trample them or rough them up or anything like that. But oftentimes, um, the little dog will compensate and be very good at defending themselves, but in case you have a shy, quiet, smaller dog, something to consider. Um, many people say they're less sociable than bigger dogs just because, again, they're concerned about being hurt, but they usually um, over-connect with their parents. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but if they don't develop social skills by spending time with other dogs, they're going to have a lot of difficulty when they get older because they won't be able to greet other dogs normally. They won't be able to play with other dogs. Pro I don't want to say properly, but just without aggression or, you know, not knowing how to interact with the other dog. They need less exercise in most cases because they are smaller, but they tend to be less active. And I know I haven't lived in a house with a small dog before, but I'm sure they have zoomies just like the rest of the dogs, but this is just what the studies in the article said. Again, if you have children or other pets in the household, they are more easily injured. So that's something you do have to take into consideration. So the same, I've, I've seen articles and videos of people who, you know how when you baby proof your apartment and make sure there's no sharp corners or anything like that, they do the same thing when they get a small dog. So they make sure there's a ramp up to the couch so they don't jump off and hurt themselves. They make sure the stairs aren't, you know, too steep so they can get up the stairs or they carry them up the stairs. They're not even allowed to do the stairs by themselves. But just making sure that 
they can get to everything without hurting themselves. And oftentimes when they have to go to the bathroom, many more smaller dogs are allowed to go to the bathroom inside on pee pads or things like that compared to bigger dogs. Because not only is there um, bowel movement or urine quantity is a lot bigger in bigger dogs, but usually, you know, the more it is, the more it smells, right? So it picks up the smell a lot faster, but just something to consider. I do want to spend more time with smaller dogs. I find I don't get to very often, but again, I'm always more worried that they're going to get hurt. So the bigger dogs, you know, I can sit on the floor with them and we can play, but the, the little ones, I have to, you know, put them on my lap and make sure that I'm not pressing too hard and things like that because, again, they are more delicate. But big dog or small, we love them all. I hope you have a fabulous rest of your week. And next week, I'm going to talk about the hazards of my job. Because of, I get asked a lot if um, I've been kicked or stepped on or bitten and things like that. So I want to address that. But there's also a lot of good hazards to my job. So that's what we're going to talk about next week. And the week after that is something else exciting that I don't want to announce yet. But... It's going to be up on my website soon, so keep an eye out for it. See you next week.